Why hello, 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 hi, it is me, it is I, small time to do your khadi and these every internet, I can stick and back hello, yalla, yalla, and it broke my heart, that's how I'm addressing it, and usually, well, less people actually watch the reviews, so, hopefully she also watches the reviews, but one of you was like, I'm not uh, responding to your comments and stuff, L honestly, like, nothing makes me happier than seeing a comment under my video, like, I'm like, somebody took time to type something. But what happens is, usually I record stuff and then I put it out and I get to work. And when I see a comment coming or a notification or something, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to respond to that one and the other one from the other video and blah, blah, blah. And then like, because I would have uploaded maybe two videos and published one, when I get back online, I'm like, oh, I haven't published anything in a couple of days. Let me just quickly press uh, public to this and then I'll come and see Whereas to you, it probably looks like I took the time to record a new video and do whatever, but it's just been sitting there waiting for me to make it public and I haven't had time to sit in with in earnest to like engage the comments and stuff. So I can't ignore you because I like hearing from you and I'm sorry you're feeling snubbed, um, but I, I'll work on it and I'll do better and I appreciate the feedback. Okay, great. Real Housewives of Durban episode, okay, yes, we're an episode behind, but for, for whatever reason, I thought it is on Fridays. I was like, I'll put it out on Thursday, I'll quickly record it and put it out because, like, the week is just getting away from me, and clearly I haven't done that. Great. Uh, where do we start? We start with Ruan going over to see Jojo. I made some notes today, just a bit, because I, a lot happened, a lot happened, I needed to make notes. Uh, Ruan goes over to Jojo's and they have an IV drip situation. They sit down and have a chat. And in the other uh, scene, we had Maria who linked up with her friend Neil. I think that's his name, right? Her her husband, her new one. You know, she changes the mouth like underwear. Good on her. Um, but anyway, they link up um, and they're having a chat about Maria's husband event. And what do you think of that? I am thinking I actually need to play season three in the back whilst I'm working like a podcast like I usually do because I'm starting to feel like I'm missing something. I'm starting to not understand why Jojo and Ruan feel like they are victims and they are owed apologies. Like honestly the conviction with which they're saying it I'm looking around like are they owed and am I missing? Did I? What happened? Like I watched it. I reviewed the whole season. It's the only thing that I've reviewed a whole season of up to the reunion. No, and Real Housewives of Cape Town. The, no, no, no. <laughs> These people want an apology for a reaction. Like Maria must apologize about having a sharper tongue than both of them after they pushed her and discarded of her and hurt her. And she's going to play this fucking stupid game with them. I'm actually going to watch and try to figure out what happened. Like, what am I missing? Oh, but we're owed an apology. You see, Maria Khan just and this and that. I'm like, what? Like the level, like the I'm down city. Is it just me? It can't just be me. It can't. Like the dildo in the wind. We're, we're having a back and forth at the reunion, but then you're acting the oh I had this problem with somebody Oof. They they never want to be they want they never want to begin at Genesi like life always begins at Matthew Mark Luke John for them like Genesi didn't happen, right? And so if you push me and I have a sharper tongue than you and I cut you because that's what I do I draw blood, right? Not in the sense that me. I don't do things like that. Okay? Because I... I don't. I'm a good girl. But I'm saying in the case of Maria. And then you turn around and try to be the victim and not talk about how we arrived there. I had somebody do this to me. They're running around all over the place saying they mad at me because I did this, because I did that. No, 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 you're mad at me because I told you the truth in the Beninging and you didn't like it. I was never supposed to do that. Girl, whatever. But anyway, um, I don't like Maria and Neil's dynamic. Neil seems to egg her on a bit. 
Neil seems to uh, be like Mr. Drama or pushing for drama so far in, in, in the little bit that we've seen him. It's always, oh, I'll come for him. It's very childish how he's like, in any this energy where I come from, it's got that same fucking energy. He's literally like to her, because she's complaining about Angel. She's like, I don't like the way Angel uh, was behaving at the party this that and the other and he's all very much like oh, are you gonna let it go but in a ma and now maria is also taking the bait like oh no i'm gonna have to ask her about it in a very i'm like what is this dynamic what 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 in the childish your friend especially at your fucking big age should be steering you away from unnecessary drama i don't get it truly i don't okay Maria calls Jojo in the next scene and she's uh, asking if they could link up and talk things through and then we get to see that later on in the episode. Sarisha links up with Nongko and they go for like a, a painting session, a sip and paint. They're having tea. they tea girlies now. Uh, the both of them. Looks like they're having like uh, iced teas or something and they're painting some ceramic and stuff. You know what I think might be happening only because of the disaster that is Real Housewives of Potomac right now. Um, I don't know if production has made them aware that Annie isn't here. Um, Sane has been removed from the situation. We need good group scenes and whatever the beef is, it's simply not hot enough to maintain. So you all need to come together as a unit, let bygones be bygones, so we can carry on with the business of the day, which is making television. Because tell me why the fuck Sarisha is sorry. What, Sarisha did fucking what to Nongko? I can think of one thing, and it was reactionary again. Way at the reunion, when she was like talking about Slee being broke at that last episode, Sarisha and Slee had like now bonded and they'd grown very close. To which uh, Sarisha was like, she better not do things like that because I'll come with my own receipts about her. Um, similar accusations that she has about Slee. I've heard things about her as well and we all have and we've all kept quiet about it. That's the lowest thing. But if you remember, last season, when Nongo did... Um, uh, um, when Jojo flung the glass across or whatever it is that she did and then water got in Nongo's eye and it was a whole situation. It was Sarisha who checked up on Nongo the next day and was like, yo, are you cool? What was that? Blah, blah, blah. After that trip, when they were all back home now, it was Sarisha who left her house to, Nongo was even in the pool, right? To go check in on Nongo and ask if everything... She's always been trying to reach out and maintain a relationship with Nonko. She's never lumped Nonko with Joe or whatever, maybe. Even Joe. She's never... Guys, di did we all watch the same last season, right? Jojo has come back with this air of she's done nothing wrong. I don't get it. Like, I I I'm very confused. They sit down for their thing. This is what makes Nonko a great housewife as much as I hate to admit it because she's not my favorite person but actually she's done nothing to upset me this entire season thus far so let me give her a fucking break but Nongo's a fucking great housewife how she volunteers up information that could potentially be weaponized against her is it's great television Nongo doesn't have to tell us that hey you know I almost bled out because I had a drinking problem essentially and the day before my surgery and even days leading up to my surgery against my uh, surgeon's advice, um, I was drinking. And they told me not to drink. Everybody knows not to fucking do that if you're going to get cut, which is what Sarisha says, right? You know, you know that. And Sarisha also says in the confessions, I did think Nunko had a drinking problem and whatever. But they were very careful from season one skirting around Nonko's drinking people are always so and she's slurring a lot last season right she's admitted last episode that she feels she, she was drinking more than ever when she was around that fucking man that she was with she says this to Soresha and then she also says to her you know um I don't know you know she she did apologize for a lot of things at the reunion, if I remember, Nongko. She's tried to hold herself accountable for some of the ways that she was moving. I got on her, there's some growth over there. And then 
in this scene, she says to Sarisha, um, what does she say? She says, why did you protect sleep or take up for sleep more so than me when you've known me longer? Because it's not about that bitch, you were just wrong. To which Sarisha says, I've tried to reach out to you many a time. I have, and, um, you maybe thought I was trying to set you up or whatever and you weren't responsive. But then Sarisha goes on to apologize that if the things that I was doing... I've now learned what my triggers are. And if there are things that I was doing to hurt you, I want you to understand it wasn't intentional and I'm sorry about that. Sorisha had a, I wouldn't say mean streak last season, but she had a no-nonsense streak last season. She had a, I think she's done. She's just done. She had more than any energy about her and it was good for her. I loved it. Jojo, uh... Jojo scenes and her husbands are too fucking long for what they are. They're a fella scene to inf inform us that she wants to host the ladies at her new house so they can see her new house, right? And she wants a, a mechanical bowl, you know, the thing that you ride and stuff. But like, why is the scene this long? Truly. Her... <sighs> anyway, Angel goes on a date with um, her... Is it her fiance or boyfriend soon to be fiance? I don't know. They sit down, they will chat about them possibly getting married. I don't know how many talks about wanting to get married can one possibly have before you just get married. I don't know. Uh, but they sit down to have a chat about that. She asked him, is he worried about the potential um challenge ahead of them possibly having a difficult time to have children or not even being able to because there's a she's um she has some infertility problems uh, from the treatment that she had from her condition in her breast. It wasn't cancer or something else. I forgot what I said it was long. But anyway, and then he's like, no, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, whatever, whatever. He, he seems like a level-headed guy on this here camera. The, the thing about men is that they are performers. Um, and he's doing a great performance. Good on him. Good bit. Um, and then he... Oh, she also apologizes about being the way that she is, about the fact that she can be on a period for days, which messes with her mood swings. And, you know, she realizes that how she behaves sometimes is much too much for him. I'm a lot like her in the sense that I know that I, I am the way that I am. What I'm not is about to apologize for being how I'm fucking... Like, you knew... If you say you like Rahadi, you see what, what it's giving, right? What You're getting no fucking sorries for that. But she's just thanking him for being so patient with her. I mean, it's their thing. I get it. Women are constantly apologizing for being outspoken or passionate or whatever it is that is considered, like, not very feminine of them. You can never be me, bitch. Like, I'm loud and that's that. I'm actually not even loud, like, in real life. Unless I'm around people, I'm very... Like, I've grown into a person that I'm like, who the fuck even is this? Like, you're, younger me, perhaps you could have described me as an extrovert. I don't think I am. Maybe Andy more than... I don't think so. I'm not. I'm definitely not fucking outgoing. I like my bed. And the door closed. The gate is closed right now. I don't want people... Because nobody is home and I was working. I'm load shedding. And I'm like, oh, I need to close that gate. I need to close that gate. I don't want to hear, and oh, Dimelani. Like, girl, no. Why? The fuck? I don't, I don't want to be out there with the people. Anyway. Yo, imagine my sister comes here looking for me. No, but she'd call. Okay, that's better. <laughs> Where are we? Uh, Jojo. Uh, when does Maria link up with Jojo? Oh, Zama gets a... She, Zama's, Zama's a beautiful woman. She really is. She's with her cousin, whomever. And she calls Steve to ask her for contacts to have somebody help her do the decor for her little shindig. She's having a 40th birthday party. And she wants somebody to help her set that up. And she asks Slee. And Slee, oh, she also invites Slee, to which Slee tells her, Hey, I'll be bringing a friend of mine. Her name is Angel. Uh, I mean, her name is... Amy. Yes. When when did Slee? It's the second scene. I skipped it, guys. Slee introduces us to her friend Amy. Amy, who the moment she pops up on my screen, I'm like, oh, familiar, oh, 
Why is she familiar? At the very end, when they played some stupid game, I was like, ah. Dare say, dare say. She's 30 years old, making her closer in age to um, the baby, the kid, Angel. So we learned that about her. We learned that she's an initiate and um, she, she initiated, but it turns out that her initiation was wrong. Hey, guys, and when Kanye Mabao spoke about this and said a lot of you are depressed and you're going the twasaring route to deal with your anxiety, your aches and your angst and all manner of things, we attacked her. Not me though. Me, I, I concurred over here the internet and people dragged me on, on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, me and TikTok somebody is always trying to pull me by my little hers. Like, <laughs> I didn't care. I didn't care. I was just like, well, I, bitch, I fucking said it. Like, whatever. <laughs> TikTok is, yo, TikTok was a great place for me, but it's, sometimes it was just a fucking headache. Sometimes the people are just like, no. But I remember people saying, Oh, you don't know what you... And my whole chat was... A lot of us, there's been an awakening of sorts um, in the last little while, especially in terms of like spiritual practices. A lot of us have um, come out of the fog where they've convinced us that the things that are of us are inherently evil and something is wrong with us and it's jesus 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 and the bible and a lot of us have just been like why why are things that are of me evil like the things that are of me are automatically evil something is wrong yeah and it's caused us to want to go on a journey to discover our roots to answer our callings to do a manner of things the issue is that we don't have guides we don't have guides because our parents abandoned these ways that are the people before them some of us come from a long line of people who haven't practiced like any cultural stuff any african spirituality nothing right a very long time so you 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 don't have guides leaving you very vulnerable to vultures in these spaces to come in and say because it's a money-making scheme like tithing right it's like anything else right if people can find a way to exploit your faith and your hopes your aspirations your need to uh, connect with like a higher power they'll do it some of your churches have atms and so i don't know why you're that's what's happened yeah she went through an initiation thing and it turns out it was wrong and she even explains that the moment i started initiating my marriage went to shits um things just like my whole life everything just started going downhill because they're trying to communicate with you that you're not on your path it's expensive i've heard some of the numbers that you guys are talking about in terms of like uh that's a lot anyway we we we, we meet amy uh you guys i'm literally using like flash from my phones <laughs> because i'm not shitting right so it, it looks looks weird but we're trying to get the video out okay content creation okay guys eh? uh maria meets up with jojo i love Maria's dress and I feel like we didn't get a good enough view of it. I love it Love it like the white dress. She's wearing I always love how they shoot real housewives the way They always try to show us the fit when the girls are walking in they're strutting and It's a whole moment and stuff uh, Anyway, she's linking up with Jojo and she arrives first. It's some cafe. It looks very pretty uh, Jojo arrives shortly after and they get there they awkward. They're like, oh, should we hug? Guys, Jojo really feels like Maria owes her an apology. And I don't know what for. For the life of me, hey, okay, guys, help me. Help me in the comments if you can. Eh? They sit down and she's like, you know, Maria's like to Jojo. I can't pinpoint where exactly we were. Neither can I. In fact, if I remember correctly, you are one of Jojo's fucking enablers. And that's why we get this, like, disgusting, like, brat of a white woman in front of our screens. Because of you and that fucking husband of hers and her friend Nongo. Like, and now Ruan, right? Everybody just, like, feeding this little beast, right? And it's, like, unassuming, so you don't want to label it a beast. But she is, oh, she's fucking insufferable, truly. 
you, Maria, again, when she flung that glass at the table last season and the water thing happened to Donko, you were the main one running after her, telling everybody to back away from her and saying, Joe, baby, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? And then when she had, is it after this scene or another scene? Because she did a whole lot. She did a whole bunch of stuff that trip. And then in the middle of the night, Calvin got in the car and drove Grandpa Calvin. But like, to be fair, all people run out of sleep. Like, they just don't sleep much in the evening. So I see why he had the energy to do all that dumb shit. And then he got in the car and... And that's not me being ages. Like, my dad literally would be napping all around the place all throughout the day. And then at two, he's like, where did my sleep go? You slept it. You slept it in the afternoon. That's where it went. It's been slept already. And then he, he gets there in the wee hours of the morning before literally the sun is not up. Okay? Even the sun is fucking still asleep. But Cal Calvin isn't. Or Calvin. What the fuck is his name? He gets there and then picks her up quickly so that she doesn't have to account for her behavior. And do you know who was at reception with him, Maria? Fucking Maria was there in the morning to see her good friend Jojo off in the middle of the night. Scurrying about the fucking place after she had caused a scene and did not want to account the morning after. Maria. Oh, baby. You were safe. You, you, you. That was Maria. Always by Jojo's side. Maria, on the other hand, just didn't seem to find a connection with Nonko. Right? And she seemed to find a connection with the other ladies. And Jojo wanted it to be an off or nothing. Right? Like, I brought you into the group. Don't make nice with the other hoes. You're my person. She didn't even fly in with the ladies at that trip. Maria drove down with Sine. That's another thing that I see that they're doing this season, starting with Soso. Soso did this at the burn station at her party. They want to shift all the blame onto Sine. Because Sine is not here and Sine is vile enough. It's easy to throw things onto Sine. You can't just say to Joe as Maria, you are actually, or you were wanting me, a grown woman, to not form other relationships and bonds with these other women. You wanted me to run after you because you've brought me into the group and say, oh, I can't sit with these other women simply because you were having a little tiff with them. A tiff over nothing, by the way. Your little mm with them was all from the fact that Nonko and Slee weren't getting along. No, 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 that's not, that's not why. See, I don't even need to go back and watch this shit. You did not like sleep because your good friend Nongko said to you, or oh, sleep didn't like you when she was introducing you. So now you're like, mm, about sleep. Sorisha and Annie take to sleep. Maria, whom you've brought into the group, takes to the three of them. And now you're mad that she's not saying, because you're not getting along with Jojo, I can't get along with you. It's not preschool. Ask a kreichemu. That, that's what happened. That's why you're not getting along. They fake it out and then they get to talking about Ruan. They apologize to each other. Or Jojo feels like Maria owes her all the apologies of the world. And I, no, I don't know. Did I make notes here? Oh, yeah. They blame Sane, right? Sane was lying, blah, blah, blah. They talk about Ruan and she gets emotional. I need for Maria and Ruan... To establish how long they've been friends. In the first scene, we also have Ruan and... By the way, Jojo needs to shut up about how long these people have been friends. Because she hasn't been friends with either one of them long enough to speak to how long they were in each other's lives. All she has to go off on is what Ruan tells her. You weren't there. You don't know the nature of their relationship. You actually don't know. By the way, some of my very good friends like live scattered all about the place one of my good mates lives a house away and i haven't been to a house in like weeks literal weeks what, what, what does somebody coming to your house or not coming to your house mean right and then joe's like no but how close were you guys because when ruan lost his job and he told me that i asked him if he has any food and then i sent him money and Guys, money makes relationships murky. Money does make relationships muddy, doesn't it? I don't know how I feel about all of that, giving people money. To which Maria is like, no. 
Also, I just don't believe Maria has that kind of access to her husband's money versus the kind of access that Jojo has to her husband's money. She's had to do too much morphing of self into this man's life who never appears on camera. We've seen him once. The girls get away with a lot on these shows now. Nonko's the only one sharing with us. Amy says she's in a relationship but she's not wanting to tell us with whom. Slee gets to do the same thing. People just get to not share their lives but they're on reality TV. What rubbish. Ah, take man. Anyway, um, she says that she's willing to apologize to Nonko as well. This is Maria to Jojo. And that she will do that at a separate date. And that her and Rewind, there's a lot of hurt there. And they will talk it through. I really don't care. Zama's party. Zama's theme is unleash your inner potential. Or unleash your potential. And she has a peacock as like the symbolic animal for this theme. That everybody's lost about. Everybody tried their best to interpret the theme. Right? People wore a lot of turquoise. People also wore feathers. Um, movement and stuff people look great but they were like what the fuck is this theme they were also disappointed about the location i'm broke right and my friends are living average good lives right um a lot of them are done better than me which is great uh because we can't all be sad about the same thing because good fucking lord if i had to hear another me complain about this shit i'm like oh my god i couldn't they meet up at this place it's a restaurant and she doesn't even have like a uh it's not even like you it's a private section and that's what everybody's saying they're filming um they like to get loose and stuff now they have to like deal with other people you got these women all dressed up for your 40th to do what essentially feels like a spur thing you called silly talking about how you need the decor to be and I'm thinking you're actually about to do something, girl. You did nothing. Also, it's not lost on me that we are... How many episodes? This is episode three. It doesn't matter. It's giving... Let's see. And it's giving a little bit... This one, the Mascandi singer from last season. Or is it in Bali? I forget. They're not based in um, Durban. But they're from there. And they've come back to shoot a show. A lot of how she moves. Zama. Is no there can't be cameras where I live. We've not had one shot. Of her. In her. Living area. Not one. She shot a scene with her cousin. And they'd gone for a walk. And went to a fucking restaurant. Right. She's now shot a scene at a shop going fake shopping they're always going fake shopping nobody ever fucking buys anything and then she made the call to sleep to ask for the decor at the shop she's now having her 40th which you would think is such an intimate thing because the group is so tiny she could do a little cute little garden setup if she, when she says she wants decor for it that's what i assume she wants to do no it's at a weird little restaurant somewhere we haven't seen where this woman lives and i don't know if they think we can't see that she doesn't live there. She said that. If she's back there to shoot the show, get her Airbnb. It's okay. Isn't that what Lassie did eventually? Anyway, uh, but we did see where Buddy lives. It just didn't look like it was a lived-in residence to me. Um, she arrives at her thing. She keeps like faffing about to the table and i'm not sure why it's not nothing fucking interesting happening there the cake looks okay um nongo arrives first dressed in black and then jojo and then they have a chat about how they've made up with uh jojo says that i linked up with maria and we hashed some things out and she mentions that she made up with so so and she feels like she's the old sorisha that she grew to love and that's whom she made friends with and blah 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 and they seem to be in a good spot about what they've both um done and then they also talk about nonko says to joe you know i'm very surprised that angel acted like she doesn't know me i have her number on my phone and she is my number nonko has some things she wants to say about angel but she says them in bits and bobs like when she was with so so at the pottery painting uh, session she also mentioned that 
I don't think this girl knows that much about construction because when I was talking to her about some codes or whatever it is that they were talking about in construction, she seemed to not have answers. She just kept saying, oh, me too. Oh, me too. So I don't know how much she really knows about this. But we will see. We will see. I think Sosa arrived next and then the ladies trickled in. Maria arrived in pink. She got there. She hugged everybody. Um, Nonko seemed warm and receptive to her. I think it's because Jojo had told her that, oh, she's um, willing to make time to sit down and apologize to you so you guys can also hash things out. So, and Maria also says in her confession, it's really nice to come into a space and not feel anxious, not be on edge because you aren't getting along with people. And I think that's why they told them to let bygones be bygones because it makes filming hard and it makes shooting certain scenes harder when everybody's on edge. Because what happens is, you all then just stay on your sides of the thing key. and you need that tension obviously for reality television it's part of how you produce it but you can't let it run wild you can't have what's happening on potomac where giselle feels like she doesn't have to talk to candace or speak to anybody that she doesn't want to speak to on the cast and then not show up for certain things and not go on this trip how are we then like doing the group scenes but like that's television for you as Slee arrives, I, I don't know why that was Slee's interpretation of the theme. She looked like she was going to the races. She did. Um, and then they're like, oh, who's Amy? She's like, oh, she's a friend of mine. You'll see when she gets here. Amy then arrives, and I think a couple of people recognize her or whatever the issue is. And she's dressed in the same dress as Maria. Her and Maria have the same pink dress on and stuff. And everybody's like, um, uh, so soon the confessional was it buy one, get one free. I'm too poor to play this game. Like, I'm fine being at an event and somebody's wearing the same dress that I'm wearing because I, I, we shopped at the same place, right? I, it's, not, it's not like I got it somewhere or I got it made and they were like, it's custom, but I'm poor. I'm not these ladies, right? They don't want to be showing up in spaces dressed the same as somebody else. I'm actually not sure how I feel about Maria's accessory situation. The the costume diamond thing with the ear it feels gaudy like in a and not in a not in a way that i like like it's i don't know but she didn't look bad it, it worked in a way you know but anyway um amy arrives okay zama then is in her zama's i don't think we're ever gonna meet her she is very guarded somebody else said this was it nonko or at the at the painting thing where she was with Soso. Soso said, you know, um, I invited her because I found her getting her nails done at my nail salon. First of all, that's a scene you had to show up for. So shut up, Sarisha. Okay. You walked into a scene that you knew you were like camera. You don't just walk somewhere and the cameras are there. And you're like, oopsie daisy, the cameras are here. Oh, also, you whom I know vaguely from years ago are also here. You should come to my burn session with my friends. What? Please stop it, you guys. So she's like, no, we're not super close. Um, we're not best of bombers or nothing like that, but I've known her for a while. And I don't know if it's also somebody said something about the fact that they feel like Zama. No, Slee. I think it's Slee said it to Amy at the shooting range when they linked up that I feel like she's guarded. And I don't know how I feel like she's, but she's interesting. This Zam, I wanna like Zama. I do want to like Zama, but she's giving newscaster. She's giving um, correctness. She's giving trying to right now her entire party. It looked like she was being a TV presenter, which is how we know them. Down to how she was talking to them. How I, I she's so rehearsed. I can't do it. I can't. You know, a uh, beautiful woman though. Anyway. She's like, no, she explains the theme that a peacock is such a beautiful thing to look at as is. But then when it opens up its feathers, you're like, oh my God. Like, you know, so that's what I was going for with the theme. And so with that said, I'd like to go around the table and then you could all share um, what your hidden thing is. Your potential that you want to uh, let the world see like the peacock does when it, you know, does its little things for the mating shit. Um, and then, who is this? Nonko says that she wants to... Oh, Jojo says her art. 
she's having a long conversation with Calvin in that fucking scene that I skipped the second time about how uh, her art has to start making her some money or blah 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 she says her art she's a very artistic person you can see that and it shows up on her body all those tats and how she expresses herself in clothing and stuff it's not too far-fetched nonko says that she wants to be impactful not necessarily that she wants to be famous even though that's the route that it's gone she wants to be impactful especially to young women when she says this in my head i'm like she already kind of is but maybe not in the way that she thought she was gonna be but a lot of people are learning a lot of lessons just by watching Nongko stumble in front of our faces. So maybe it's not in the way that she intended, you know, how she came on our screens with the synthetic wigs and stuff. Um, some of the growth that we see to have her relationship with alcohol, trying to make sense of that. The situation with that man that she had. A lot of women are able to see themselves in her sort of have an outer body experience and be like oh wow is that what it looks like when you center a man or is that what it looks like when you're not accountable so she is having an impact i feel but maybe it's not the way she wants to have it but when she's done or when she's done enough work she will be able to look back and say oh okay that's cool a lot of women resonate with her because she's a good fan base people really take up for nonko they resonate with her because they are as underdeveloped i don't know what word to use where i'm not being mean but like they are as they have the same issues as her and they are they sympathize with her that they it's helpful i'm telling you it, it it's annoying to me to watch because i feel like you should already get this you're fucking big but we don't the journey is not the same the pace won't be the same right the impact is happening, just maybe not how she thought because she maybe she wanted to minister. Sorisha says that she I don't know what the fuck Sorisha said, but she says she lost her two brothers and she feels like there needs to be more. Uh Angel says she wants to listen to intuition. I know exactly what she means. I have this thing where when a client comes to me and they 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 want to work with me on something, it's it's the gut thing. It's an intuition. It literally feels like a voice whispering, no, not this one. Let it go. And every time I've ignored that thing, I've lived to regret it. Listen to it. And she says she's doing it. She, 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 she does that and she wants to stop. You you listen to it. It's like, no, not this guy. This guy's not the one. No, not this guy. This guy's not the one, right? But it's like, no, I want a man. I have to have a man. I get where Angel is coming from. Maria said something about writing a children's book. I don't know where she's going with that. Zama says she wants to minister God's word. It's her calling. She just laughed the confessional. She's like, we have another nonko. She's like to 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 um uh, at the shooting range with Amy. She's like, I call Nonko Deputy Jesus. You better fucking call her that. <laughs> she does think she's Deputy Jesus. Zama then stands up. She's the last one to talk about this inner potential stuff. And then she stands up and she's left the table sort of. And then Angel sighs. And then somebody's like, I think it's Amy. Amy's like, oh, what's the matter? Is everything okay? She's like, no, I'm dealing with some fertility issues. Right? And then Zama then comes back, but she's at the cake. She doesn't hear what was said. And she's like, huh, what's happened? And then they're trying to tell her she's like the cake like she doesn't hear what they're saying and then when she finally does hear what they're saying mind you zama is also dealing with her own for possible fertility problems and when they said something about fertility I, I saw her get uncomfortable right rightfully so why are you talking about something so heavy at my fucking party at the table you want attention i'm sorry and then she's like, okay, can we cut the cake and we'll get back to that. Everybody felt like she was tone deaf. The politically correct thing to do in that moment would have been for Zama to indulge this moment and let it go on and tank the mood. That would have been the correct thing to do on camera. She don't want to. She doesn't care for Angel. They don't get along. I thought it was still in poor taste, right? I would have done the correct thing and been like, oh, okay. Maybe not necessarily said me too, but been like, Oh, that's so sad, blah, blah, blah. Giving her a moment to share a little bit more about it before 
we commenced with like the festivities, right? But she didn't want to do all of that. Everybody thought that was in such poor taste. She's like, okay, fine, we'll get back to that. Let me just make a wish. Because it is her fucking birthday. Why am I talking about your thing at ease on my 40th? In this like spur like restaurant. Um, anyway, she cuts the cake and then she says, let's play a game, right? Um, and the game that they want to play is somebody said. Is it somebody said? Uh, someone here. It's someone here. They've played this game before with Londi when they were on the safari. And Jojo's like, I got into a lot of hot water over playing this game, so I don't want to play it again. But anyway, I'm always curious. With that other one, somebody would write the thing, right? They all wrote the questions with the one that they played with Londi. And then they threw it into the a little hat or whatever that it was. And they would pick from there. Who came up with these questions? Because, baby, someone was like, um... Someone is pretending to be in a happy marriage and they were like Maria Maria is the one who read it or whatever Maria is like, okay Then it has to be me because it's only three people married. Yeah, what is Maria gonna say? It's Jojo. It's Arisha. They're the only other Sorry, they're the only other married people there. Nah, I'm gonna make a joke of it and just say it's me and run with it Also, we never see her fucking husband. So I don't know. I don't know Um and then they're like somebody here faked being gifted a car or something. And then it was Nonko. Obviously, and Nonko owned it. She's like, no, at the time, I didn't know that this car wasn't really being purchased for me. I learned in hindsight. Wada, wada, wada. Okay. Then another card says somebody here is a pathological liar. This is clearly a, a shit starting, shit stirring game. They could have done anything else positive. Truly, they could have. Um, and then Maria says, I think it's you, Angel. And Angel's like, what the fuck? You know, it really took, like, she was taken aback by the entire thing. And at this time, at this moment, I could tell Angel was still low from being dismissed by Zama the way she's dismissed. Zama hasn't gotten over the, hasn't gotten over how Angel confronted her at the burn session when she was like, I'll go after the kid. Angel overreacted. I'll give her that. But Angel then owned it at the Gusband event that Maria threw, right? Great. Then in front, in front of everybody, mind you, okay, she was boss enough to overreact at the burn session in front of company. She was boss enough at Thing I Keep to apologize in front of everybody. And then you, Zama, accepted this um, apology in front of people, but now you're like, have this animosity towards this girl. If you weren't for the apology, you should have just kept it a buck. Like, and, like, now this girl thinks you guys are starting afresh, you're cool. But you, no, you're not. You do not like this girl. And it, it is the age thing. It's how dare she confront me when she's 10 years younger than me. Nicely. Nicely so. That's how. She didn't like being called that. And she told you. And I guess nobody tells you shit. I don't know. But anyway, um, where was I? Oh, yes. I could tell that Angel was still like a bit low from being dismissed the way she was by Zama. So this is coming at a left field now. She's like, what are you talking about? Maria then says, no, you told Jojo uh, that I discussed Ruan with you. And that didn't happen. And you also said this at the Gusband event. That I discussed Ruan with you and this never happened. I don't even know you like that. In fact, at first she's like, I don't know you, I don't know you, I don't know you. To which he says, but wait, I know her through you. Like I was looking for a contact for a designer and you're the one that linked us. She's like, no, I don't know her like that. And she says she's known me for six months. I don't know her that long. Maria, Angel is feeling like collateral damage. Angel is feeling like something that's easy to dispose of so you can try to get back in with Joe and Ruan. I actually want this to unfold because there's something here where I feel like Maria is being less than honest. Maria is so hurt about what Ruan happened. I don't even think she realizes who all she's talking to about it. I think if she sees anything that vaguely resembles an ear, she will whisper in said thing, you know Ruan did this to me. It don't even need to be a living anything. 
that fucking statue of Utata. She will climb up that thing to get to the ear to let the statue of Utata know that Ruan hurt my fucking feelings. That's how much she's been hurt and going about, lashing out and doing things. She probably doesn't even recall having this conversation. Because maybe it wasn't passing or it wasn't in detail like maybe she thought it was. But for whatever reason, I don't think Angel is lying and I'm prepared to be wrong. I don't think Angel is lying. I don't. I think something was said, maybe not in detail, but for her to just say all together, no, 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 no. And also to make like she really doesn't know that girl like that, like that, no. This thing of you guys also of running around calling everybody my friend, my lady, you're going, yeah, look now. Levin. Look. We're not really friends. We're industry friends. We're, we're influencer friends. We're, you're not mates. Like, they are your colleagues. they peers. they they industry. they acquaintances. Like, it's okay. Jeez. Oh. Then that somebody wears fake designers. And then they were like, I'm not getting into this. I wonder who they were talking about here. I wonder who they were talking about here. Because Mabusi is not on it. Not right now. Then the last one was somebody here faked a hijacking. It was like, ding, 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 ding. That's where the fuck I know Amy from. She went viral for sharing how she was hijacked or fake hijacked by this lady that she knows. And a whole thing. I remember that story going super, super viral. And we cut off. I guess we're going to pick up from the scene in the next episode, which I am going to watch now. And then I'm going to edit this and try to get it out to you guys at somewhat a decent time my whole week late but that's my honey Mwah. bye Ella.